I want to welcome you, Minister, and indeed all the various members from the business community that are here today into the House to hear our views on the proposed introduction of supports for small businesses and the self-employed. And I'd like to thank you, Minister, um, for your responses to the various issues that were raised by my colleagues here today. But I want to reiterate some of those views that have been raised by my colleagues and air some of the specific challenges that I see uh, facing the Irish business community. First and foremost, I want to point out that prior to my nomination to the Shannon, I had been self-employed and indeed all of my family have been self-employed all of their lives as well. So I know exactly the specific challenges that face many of those people out there who are striving hard to keep their boat afloat because I've experienced some of these issues firsthand. And in particular, I want to highlight the utterly negativing situation that exists in Ireland. Now more than ever, we need those who have an entrepreneurial spark and verve to feel secure about following their business dream. The current situation whereby one is prejudiced in terms of acquiring social protection following the collapse of their business must come to an end. How can we realistically encourage people to develop a business idea, go out there, get funding, if they do not have a safety net should things go wrong? This is a misguided policy in my opinion, but not only is it misguided, it is, it is utterly prejudicial towards the business people involved. I find that it is unacceptable to me and I would urge you, Minister, to liaise with the Minister for Social Protection to address this rather unfortunate anomaly which exists in Irish law so that Irish entrepreneurs can set about set starting Irish businesses and creating Irish jobs uh, without fear of confronting a uniquely Irish problem should things become untoward in their business life. Moreover, Minister, I would urge you to bring to the fore and prioritise the Prompt Payments Directive from Europe, which will inevitably be transposed into Irish law in the forthcoming years. The directive will give many businesses in Ireland the legislative framework and legislative protection required so that Ireland can decisively shift from a to a culture of prompt payment. It will seek to re reverse the trend of late payment by penalising debtors who are late with their payments as it introduces interest rates and fixed penalties for those who, who fail to comply without further notice. However, the directive must not be limited in terms of application. It must apply to all businesses, including state bodies and multinationals who are in receipt of state supports. With 1,900 corporate entities being wound up in Ireland last year, and that's not taking into consideration the number of partnerships and sole traders as well, this legislation will be essential to help them create more confidence in what they do, and it will afford the protection to hard-stung creditors who are out there operating in an already very difficult marketplace. But another issue that, is to be, that has come to the fore in Irish life um, in recent times, and a number of people have raised this issue with me as well, is access to credit and finance facilities. It's absolutely imperative if Irish businesses are to buck the unfortunate trend of years past. While I would welcome the, the Finance Minister Michael Noonan's announcement in the budget that he is setting a lending target of €3.5 billion Euro for Bank of Ireland and AIB to lend to the SME sector, we need to police this more, more radically because I understand that the, these banks are engaging in a, in a horrible practice in that they are changing the situation with regards to loans. They, they're withdrawing overdrafts and they're turning these into term loans on people and letting them masquerade as new lending. Time is up, Senator, sorry. Thank you. Uh, they're letting them masquerade as new, new lending for the purposes of satisfying the requirements set down by the Minister for Finance. So this is something that we need to look at and look at very, very quickly um, because I think that we should focus more radically on the situation um, and ensure that, they, that we take into consideration the drawdown figures as opposed to loan applications that have been approved. Thank you. Thank you.